Hello, Greater Portland family and friends. Thank you for tuning in to this website, GPBC Update. The staff and I pray that you're doing well and that every mom had a blessed and happy Mother's Day last Sunday. It was such a blessing to be able to see so many of you last Saturday as we gave out those beautiful flowers and were able to greet all of you that came by. I wanted to give you an update on the prospect of our being able to meet again here at the campus of Greater Portland Baptist Church. For the last month, I've been working with CLA and Dr. David Gibbs and the Pacific Justice Institute with attorney Ray Hackey and almost 100 pastors here in Oregon trying to get our doors opened once again. We had filed for a temporary restraining order, but the judge is considering a preliminary injunction instead. He will rule on this this Thursday at 8 a.m. to noon, so please pray that he will rule in our favor. We here at Greater Portland and as your pastor are concerned about several things during this time. First of all, churches have been categorized as simply being non-essential. Let me say for the record, that simply is not true, not only in my mind, but also in God's mind. So I ask you please to pray that that thought would be changed in our culture. Secondly, in reopening the doors of our church, we've not even been made honorable mention on the list. And so we're concerned about that. As a matter of fact, this morning, over a thousand pastors of all faiths had a webinar meeting with the governor's staff that have been assigned to answer questions and to assist us in the reopening process. My staff and I were part of that meeting and webinar. We are currently waiting on some answers to some vital questions that will help us better determine when we might be able to reopen our church doors. At this time, we're under a maximum limit of 25 people in a service with a six foot distancing mandate. And we're diligently working on a plan to reopen our doors, but under the current rules, it simply is not feasible. As your pastor, there are three prerequisites that I believe we must meet in order to open the doors here of Greater Portland Baptist Church. Number one, it must be done scripturally. Certainly everything that we do must be done in a way that honors and glorifies God, and it must be done scripturally. Number two, it must be done safely. When we open those doors and we have you come back, we're going to make sure we're ready. And to the most vulnerable, we want to make sure that you are confident that you come in. We've done the best that can humanly possibly be done to make sure this is a safe step to take. And then number three, it must not only be done scripturally and safely, but it must be done strategically. I told you before, when we come back, uh, we're really not coming back. We're going to go forward, and there's some steps that we're going to need to take to accomplish that. So please pray that God will help us as we seek to have GPBC once again hosting in-person services. Currently, we know of five families that have been impacted by the COVID virus. Uh, Teresa Herring for Brenda Jackson's brother Hugo, for Linda Pico's parents, Wynn and Vivian Bulch, for Glenn Iser's mom, Marianne Predmore. And at this time, they're all stable and recovering. And we praise the Lord for that, but please keep praying for each of them. Also, please continue to reach out to one another. Whether you send a text, whether you make a phone call, or send an email, you can rest assured that it really does make a difference. Once again, if you need a church directory, and that may be necessary just to uh, reach out to others, uh, then we ask you to call the church office and we can get you one of those. Your prayers continue to make a difference. And a note of appreciation has come in from our members that are currently serving on the front line of the medical field in different capacities. Again, there's Rosalie Liggett for Olga Arvero, for Barbara Hurd, and Sergio Cruz, and Rufus and Dee Johnson, and Mary Strickland, and Natalie Weaver, and Jessica Johnston, and Brian Lockhart, and of course, Dr. Bob Sason and the Good News Clinic. So please pray for God's protection over each of them. 
Pastor Scott and Pastor Andrew are doing a great job with our kids and our teen ministries. Be sure to tune in to our online Super Church on Sunday at noon and then our Teen Ignite Ministries on Sunday at 4 p.m. Please pray also for our buses and our van captains as they endeavor to stay in touch uh, with our children and our families. Please, uh, although we're unable to bring them to church during this time, we're hoping and praying that they will be ready when we're able to start that ministry up again. The same is true for our adults and our children, Sunday school teachers. Please stay in touch with all of your class role and be sure to talk with them uh, at least once a week and call them and, and keep them abreast of what is happening. Brother Rick Tarazis and our prison ministry team also continue to need your prayers. They're limited to what they can do right now until this pandemic has passed. So please pray that the quarantine will lift soon and they can begin ministering inside our jails and our prisons once again. Please also remember to pray for his mother, Jean, who is struggling with the complications of dementia as well. Praise the Lord. Your faithful stewardship continues to make a difference. God is using each of you to meet the needs of your church through the faithful giving of your tithe, your missions, and your dream offerings. Thank you for being a faithful steward. Many have taken advantage of being able to give online, while others have, have mailed in your offering. Some continue just to drop by the church and to bring your offering inside. You can do that on Tuesday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And let me also continue to encourage you to pray about the love offering for Pastor Brad and Kelly McFeeder's 25th anniversary here at GPBC. Please give online or on the website or on your phone app, but be sure to designate it for the 25th anniversary for Brad and Kelly McFeeders. We want to give this to them this Sunday, May the 17th. So if you've not yet given or you desire to do so, please give your love offering before then. We're looking forward to making that a special time to each of them. As I told you, they also are celebrating their 35th wedding anniversary, and their children have given them a getaway trip to Hawaii whenever that becomes a possibility. Now, no doubt, our love offering will be a tremendous help and blessing to them as they celebrate these two great milestones in their lives. As we plan for our homecoming, let me help you to know that we are not just coming back. We are going forward, and we're working hard to get ready for that opening day. So until then, as I said last week, let us look for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give us a call if you need anything, and rest assured that we love you, we are faithfully praying for you, and I trust that God will bless you all. If you have any way that we can assist you or answer any questions, we look forward to talking to you. God bless you. We love you. From the deacons and the staff, I look forward to when I can see you again.